Hello, I'm Sina Mualami, and I'm the product manager for RS3. In this video, we are going to talk about 3D seepage analysis. Checking the stability of hydraulic structures when we are dealing with the fluctuation of pool water pressure is necessary. The effective stress can change rapidly, and in some cases, it can cause catastrophic failure. In RS2 and RS3, you can do a steady state and transient simulation with variety of hydraulic models available. So let's go to RS3 and check the stability of an earth dam after a drawdown. Here you can see the geometry of the dam, and we are interested to find the stability of the structure when the water level in upstream drops multiple meter in a short period of time. So let's go to the project setting. Let's go to the groundwater tab, and you can see I set the transient simulation for this model. Let's go to the stage tab. You can see I have defined four stages. In the first stage, we do a steady state to find the initial pool water pressure in the model, and then we reduce the water table in three stages in a period of 10 days. Since we want to find the stability of the dam, the shear strength reduction method is active. Now, let's apply the boundary condition. At the beginning, the water level at the upstream is at the elevation of 57 meter, and after 10 days, it drops to 50 meter. To apply this behavior to the model, we need to define the proper boundary condition. So let's go to groundwater menu and define groundwater boundary condition. I have defined total head equal to 57 meter to define the water level for the first stage. However, to model the drawdown, I need to define a new boundary condition to reduce the water level by time. Also, please note that the seepage phase condition is activated for this boundary condition. And finally, I define the seepage boundary condition for the downstream. Now let's apply them to the model. Let's go to the selection tab. I have predefined two surfaces, one for upstream and the other one for downstream. I first select the upstream. I go to groundwater, add groundwater boundary condition, and I take the total head equal to 57 meter only for the first stage. I take the same surface, but this time I want to apply the second boundary condition, which is the rodel. It just starts from the second stage to the end. Finally, I pick the downstream and apply the seepage boundary condition. This boundary condition indicates if the water level reaches to this surface, it would be considered as a free surface and the water can flow outside of the domain. Otherwise, the surface will be considered as an impermeable boundary. Also, in order to consider the weight of the water, I applied the ponded water load. So let's go open the final model and check the results. I'm going to switch the data type to total head. As you can see, the maximum total head is 57 meter, as we assigned it as a boundary condition. Let's change the data type to solid displacement and check the total displacement. The maximum one is happening at the crest of the dam. To see the variation of total head with the time, I'm gonna show the results in a control plane only. And I switch the data type to total head. As time goes, the water level in the upstream goes down. For the later stages, the total head at the boundary is going down while the whole water pressure is not dissipated completely above the water table. And this can create a low effective stress in this area and causes the failure of the dam. To see that weather, I'm going to switch the data type to total displacement. I'm going to switch the SRF to one stage after the critical SRF. And as you can see, the failure is happening in the upstream. In this example, we saw that by reducing the water level rapidly in the upstream, the failure could happen in the dam. 
This phenomenon happens when the pool water pressure is not fully dissipated and the ponded water load is removed from the upstream. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any question, please leave in the comment section below.